Silage was not something that was completely new. In fact, the ancient Egyptians had siled crops. But in England, haymaking was very much the traditional way of preserving grass for feed during the winter months. Making good hay relies on hot, sunny weather to actually sun-dry the cut crop. The fickle British weather often made this difficult. Silage did not rely on the sun to dry the crop. The cut crop could be ensiled, allowing naturally produced acidic conditions to effectively pickle the crop. Here, an Albion land-wheel driven reciprocating knife mower in action. The tractor being a trusty standard force. A reciprocating fork type loader in action. It still needed two operators on the load, although one could do it, but it would be jolly hard work and a slow speed was necessary of about two and a half miles an hour for safety. This is a David Brown earth scoop which could be used in forward and reverse. The manufacturer stated it could dig a silage pit quickly shifting up to 10 tons of soil per hour and do leveling, terracing, carting and dumping. The tractor is a David Brown and fitted with rear wheel weights to give better traction. When the earth scoop was full, it was driven out of the pit and the soil, or spoil, as some folks would call it, is dumped on the side edges of the pit. You might think the tractors are Ferguson. If so, look again. The wheels are different. It's a Ford 2N. Sometimes, particularly in muddy conditions, it would be best not to drive into the pit. So another way would be to load the pit from the sides, as demonstrated by this Ferguson and buck rake. Because a buck rake can be tipped, the tractor does not have to get too close to the edge. Judging by the attire, this looks like a demonstration of a sideage chopper shredder. Belt driven, you can just about make out a Fordson E27N in the background. It may be winter, but looking at the amount of clothing the operator's got on, he's not planning to be forking the silage for very long. Ground crop sprayers can vary from high volume trailed machines to lightweight low volume simple machines, which could easily be handled by a small tractor, such as the Grey Ferguson scene here. Note the lack of PPE, that's personal protective equipment worn by the driver. Spray materials could be herbicides, insecticides or fungicides. A contractor's machine, this one, a Farmall M, using a trailed high volume sprayer, which would be capable of applying 60 to 100 gallons per acre, 660 to 1,100 litres per hectare. Tank size around 500 gallons, 2,250 litres. Low volume sprayers were small, simple, lightweight machines that could be lifted by the tractor's hydraulics, as this Fordson E27N shows. Low volume would be about 5 to 20 gallons per acre, that's 55 to 220 litres per hectare. Here we have a Ransom Air Blast trailed sprayer powered by an Alice Chambers WD tractor. In air blast sprayers, or blower sprayers as they were sometimes called, the spray at the nozzle was at low pressure, but a powerful high velocity air blast breaks it up into droplets. This picture shows an interesting machine. It's a bean road crop tractor which looks to be fitted with a pneumatic sprayer, the barrel forming the tank. Nozzles are fitted on a boom at the front of the toolbar. Note the lack of operator PPE though. The Series 1 Land Rover was launched in 1948. 8,000 were sold in the first full year of production. Here, KPO 845 is being put to work with an Allman low volume sprayer. The Land Rover's PTO driving the sprayer's pump. 
Perhaps KPO 845 is still around today. The Ministry wanted to convey the fact that sprays were expensive and many were dangerous too. On the left is how not to do it. There's no PPE, bare arms, bare hands, looks like the whole can is being carelessly emptied into the sprayer from a height. On the right is how it should be done. The operator is wearing PPE, has measured out the required quantity and is adding it carefully to the sprayer, minimising any splashing.